Hello everyone, so in this video let us talk about one more problem from lead code. It's an easy problem. The problem name is count binary substring. So the problem statement goes like this that you're given a binary string s return the number of non-empty substrings that have the same number of zeros and ones. So now it pretty seems very simple, but that all the ones and zeros in the substring are grouped consecutively. That's the main concern of this problem as well. So you have to find out all those substrings. So let us take one example so that you can understand it more clearly. But you just have to find out the number of substrings in which the number of ones and zeros are same, but they should be grouped like consecutively. So let's take the first example 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So let us take one example. So let's say it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now let's say that you want to find out consecutive zeros, like consecutive a grouped substrings of same number of zeros and ones so you can take this because it has zeros and ones that is frequency of two but you have to consider that all the zeros are on one side and all the ones are on the one side that is one of the case one what you can also do is that you can take this as a substring in which zeros and ones are of the same frequency and they are grouped together apart so what you can directly do one more thing is that you can take this as a substring as now can you take this even in this scenario, there are like uh, four zeros and uh, four ones, but it is not a valid case because the ones and zeros should be grouped together. Okay, they should not be like having like this faces or like all of that. So like e this is one of the valid things. All the zeros are together, all the ones are together. That is a valid substring. But all those like there's some space that is not required. So what what is the main uh, approach for this problem? What you can directly observe is that if there is like because it's a binary string there are either one or zeros that is fine the only thing that which comes to my mind while solving out this problem is that either i have zeros or i have ones and i can club only those two okay because like i can club zeros to one ones and zero ones to zeros and so on so what you can do is that let's say i have two zeros then let's say i have three ones three ones then again two zeros and let's say one one let's say one in that scenario can you tell me like how many different substring you can form what you can see is that let's say that if i have zero 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 one 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 what i can do is that i can form this i can form this i can form this so this is one of the valid substrings okay so you can start from the very between this is one of the valid you can form then growing one step on the left one go one step on the right so this is one of the valid substrings because it has an equal number of zeros and ones and they are grouped together similarly this is also valid so what you can directly observe is that i have to form a group of zeros so i have to first find out the group of zeros length okay so there are two zeros and three ones now how many substrings you can form what you can say because there are two zeros and three ones i can form this as one substring and this as one string so whatever is the minimum frequency of both of them because because there are two zeros and three ones so because it means that i can only form two substrings which has like like a, uh zeros and ones which are stuck together okay and in groups only so what you can actually understand from here is that whatever is the minimum of both of these number is the number of substrings i can form from this part okay now let's say the next thing comes now now there are three ones and two zeros again i can form a pair like this this and this which means that again the minimum of both of both of these two numbers will give me the answer why because again i can form substring from this two because whenever a number change is there whenever a number change like first i have two then i have three when like so this three means that now this is of different parity two is of like i don't care about which parity is there because there are two parties zeros of one but this is of let's say if it is a zeros it will be a one it will be zeros of the it will be a one so what you can directly see is that you can first find out contiguous segments of zeros and ones okay like contiguous so for zeros one zero like whatever is there and push it inside some container okay let's say like two three three five two six we do not care about what is the but there should be a different parity like opposite parity. so let's say if it is zero zeros then it is one then it is zeros and it is ones okay and so on now what i'll do is that from the zeros and ones how many substring i can form the minimum of both of them again for this two 
what is the number of different subsequent I form? Minimum both of them. Minimum both of them. Minimum and just add all of them and that's answer. Nothing much complicated here as well. So I hope you understand the overall flux, how we have come to this conclusion. Let us move on to the code pattern now. How we can do is that so the one thing is that we have to push in a vector, we have created a vector, different parity. So it will be starting from 0, then 1, 0, and 1, and so on. So we have for the last group, let's say the last group is 0, 0, 0, and then it stopped. In that case, I will lose track of the last group because I will only change my, like I will only know that this group is completed when in the end, uh, like I, whenever the parity changes. So let's say it is 1, 1, 1, then 0. Whenever I first of, I'll find out the first seconds of zero, which means that the contiguous ones have completed. Now we'll move to the next zeros. So now this is forming out one complete group. But for the last group, which is like zero, 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 let's say whatever it is, or like one, 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 whatever it is, say, I will not terminate because whenever I, go, because the loop will terminate, but the group will not terminate. So what I'll do is that I will insert in the back a, a number that is not binary. Okay, let's say because either it is 0 1 but let it not be in this string so it is minus 1. Now what will happen is that I will iterate over this whole string and whenever I hit the last character I will definitely break this point like I will break because it is near the 0 1 and then I will take out or extract of the last group. That is one of the tricks you will definitely use in many problems and I have also used in different problems whenever I have to terminate at the end like I am forming groups whenever I am form forming groups in any problem okay in any problem I am forming groups try to insert a very unusual character that is not in the scope of different characters used in the string at the back so that we can directly terminate and take the last group as well or else we have to write down one if else condition extra at the end of the for loop to take out that group as well. okay that is like this will make it the code looks very simple and very easy only in one for loop now what we'll do is that we have inserted a minus one it will over the whole string whenever the two the two consecutive characters are same which means that they are same which means that it is completely forming a complete one group so we will just incre increment the total whenever they, they, they don't match out which means that the parity changes out either it is zero now it becomes one so what i'll do is i'll push back the current total whatever group that we are building total number of characters that are in one group i will insert that in this v vector so that we have the complete group and then again start from the new fresh of the new parity characters that we have and then we have accumulated in a vector like different parties uh, characters group length now what i'll do is the total answer is alliterated over in the new vector that we have accumulated from the first index and for every two consecutive characters find out the minimum value of both of the consecutive characters and just append in the answer and just return the answer because for every two consecutive characters we just assuming that they are different parity so we can form substrings from that so substring length the number of substrings i can form with different parities is the minimum of the values of the group we have find out in the v vector or stored in the v vector that is the overall logic for this problem now the like the time omicity for this problem is this is a for loop iterating over storing in v and this is one more for loop total time velocity is o of n and then the space complexity is storing out in this v vector so o of n as well that is all time velocity and space complexity for this problem if you still have doubts you can mention down in the comment box thank you for watching this video till the end i will see you in the next one till i keep coding and bye